Hello, hello, hello. It's Tom from Tom and Ruth Philippine Adventures. How is everybody doing today? Today, we're going to talk about um, living in the Philippines. And say, for instance, uh, this comes, this is for Tony and uh, Walter and a couple of the guys that sent me emails. So, say you come to the Philippines. How much is land? How much you plan on expending? How much are the cost factors? Because I put in there about the burden yesterday, uh, a video, and they were talking about, okay, um, what is the best way for me to buy property? How much is it gonna cost me? What kind of uh, loopholes do I have to go through? My wife and I are looking at some property and uh, just a ballpark figure because what property goes for here is gonna be really different than what it goes for somewhere else. So I can definitely take about what I paid here and what it's going for down the road and what it's going for up on the highway. So if you are a foreigner coming to the Philippines, I can only tell you about my area. So my area, if you were to buy a lot, I bought these lots from a real good friend of mine. Uh, they go to our church and uh, they're really good people. Uh, I bought this lot and the lot behind me. There's two lots, uh, 10 by uh, 15. And so I bought two 10 by 15s. So uh, 20 by 30. These each lot was cost me uh, two thousand dollars, a little over two thousand dollars. It was like uh, two hundred and uh, one two thousand one hundred dollars, something like that, for the lots. Uh, so four thousand two hundred dollars. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, depending in U.S. where you go, of course, now you can pay anywhere from twenty thirty thousand dollars per lot. But then in some cases, you can find a lot for $5,000. It's like it is anywhere else. I found uh, 15 lots in Florida, one acre lots, high and dry, power and water, uh, anywhere from $2,500 to $4,500 to $4,900. And nothing over five, I mean $5,000, nothing over $5,000. Uh, the and you can live there uh, and it's titled for house and or mobile home and or RV and or. So you can actually, you know, uh, put a tie in a house there if you wanted to, like, you know, have many of them. So land here. Now land right down the road here, uh, a gentleman sold his, he sold it, he sold it for uh, $20 per square meter. So he sold a piece of property down here. You get land really cheaper down here. So a good piece of land is going to cost you cheaper than what it was for me here. Uh, right down the road here. And he got, they have 600 square meter for sale. Um, and it's really a good price for like um, 60, uh, 600,000 pesos, which is $12,000. But it's got it's a pretty good sized lot. On the highway, you're going to end up paying 2,000 pesos, $40 per square meter. But then you got to pay taxes on that. Taxes can run accordingly, uh, and for sure on the highway, you make sure you pay your taxes because they'll take that property. Taxes here for me for uh, my properties uh, run about six or seven dollars a year, uh, maybe ten dollars a year, and those taxes have to be paid first of the year. A lot of times, people don't really realize uh, that. Now, I just searched this morning. You can buy land where I'm at down in a place called Don Carlos, where the airport is. You can buy land right now, down the road, by the airport. Uh, really nice lots, big lots, 30 by 30, 30 meter by 30 meter, which is pretty good sized lots. Uh, you can put a couple houses on those. And as you know, uh, let's see, an acre, uh, for an example, an acre is a .40 a hectare. So you get two hectare per acre, okay? But these lots are really nice down there. And they're selling these lots for, you can buy the lots for cash, uh, 2,500, 3,500 uh, dollars, which is 150, 200,000 peso, which is 4,000 dollars. Nice lots, really nice lots. And that is the time to buy because down there, once that airport gets done here in 100 years, uh, they they say it's going to be five years, and that was five years ago. So I don't know when it's going to get. Doesn't matter when it's going to get done. So there's property down there. It's really prime property. A uh, farmer. Uh, cut up his land, his sugar cane land, he's selling plots for houses. Now, a certain thing I want to tell you, if you're going to get in a house here, make sure you know your neighbors, make sure you know the area, make sure you're prepared for the 
karaoke, the roosters, and the roosters in the yard next to you. Uh, 3 a.m. wake up calls. 2 a.m. wake up calls. The guy's cranking up his motorcycle, loud, 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 and partying and drinking. This is what they do sometimes. They drink and they party and, and then they crank up the motor and, and it's a pop, pop, pop. Sounds like a Harley. Because they cut the muffler up to sound like one. Because, you know, that's the thing. So you have to make sure that, you know, sometimes, honestly, it's better buy a rice field, build up your mound of dirt. And I'm talking a rice field, like um, uh, two, three acres, five acres rice field, where you drive in, there's one driveway going in, you pull in one driveway, and you, in the middle of the rice field is a house. I have a friend did that, put a bamboo house. That's exactly what he did. He said, I don't have to worry about roosters. I don't have to worry about dogs. I don't have to worry about anything other than maybe an occasional snake and occasional rats that come out of the rice fields. So what they did with that, they bought a trapping system for the rats, you know, like they do in the States. You go to a restaurant, those little boxes. So, But they're constantly doing those. So that's a pitfall of living in the middle of the rice fields too. And when they're harvesting the rice, the hull and everything else gets everywhere. But still, again, too, sometimes it's better to go through uh, a month of that than go through uh, 12 months of karaoke all in ours night. Property in town, if you go buy property in town, you can buy a piece of property in town, and I, I want to say in town itself, and you can actually lease property. Leases are different, but buying a piece of property uh, in my area, there is a friend of mine has property out towards our, our park, and he's selling it. I don't know if he sold it yet or not. I can ask him. So if somebody's interested in some property, let me know, and I'll reach out to him and see if he sold it. He may be. He was interested in selling it. He was going to move here, but move over there by uh, uh, CDL, Miss Miss Oriental, or somewhere over there, and he's there in that area. So uh, there are properties that you could buy. Properties you can you can uh, buy fairly good here. Now I talked to my I reached out to some of my friends this morning in Behold, Naga, Elo Elo, uh, Angela City, San Fernando those areas where property was going. Well, forget about it. Now, behold, prices are about what they are here. So is Naga. Uh, the prices in, uh, in uh, of course, Manila were a lot more expensive. Uh, San Fernando were a lot more expensive, quadruple amount of money. They were going for 1 million peso for a lot like mine. So 1 million peso is $20,000. So, and you can build a nice house here to build a house for a nice house. I don't know if you guys saw one I did this morning, uh, a short, a nice house over here. I don't know what he does for a limit. I'm assuming he's a farmer. Most people around here that are rich are farmers, uh, sugar cane, rice, things like that, and had it in their, you know, five generations, okay? So everything's paid for, and then they just keep growing, growing. And it's a family affair where they all work together, and, uh, you know, someone wants a car, okay, next year you get a car. And then it goes, next year, no, you get the car. He already got a car, and if they just rotate that way, and so that way, uh, it's done by seniority like a brother, I'm the oldest, I get the car first, and then second, third, fourth, and down the sisters. And it's done that way, so you may have to wait five to seven years, but that money they folk put it all in one pile, and then okay, we're gonna buy you a car, what do you want? And that's how they do it really a genius way, but then again, too, that makes them all rich, and they do the same in houses. So, uh, I like this house here, the, the, has a house over here somewhere, back over there somewhere, they said. So they just do that. Uh, housing here and building a house, it can range depending on the labor and everything else. It varies. To build a nice house, or you can build a nice house here for ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, up to a million. But if you really want to have it extravagant and nice, it's going to cost you at least $2 million peso. But you can build a really nice house for one twenty thousand dollars. You can build a nice house. I decided to go this route because it's nine thousand dollars, and so that's the reason why I have this house. It's nine thousand dollars, and for me, uh, it was beneficial. And it still is to this day. Uh, God forbid something happened and a storm come through, and I need to move the house. All I gotta do is pack this stuff up in two days, pick it up, move it where I want to move it, put it down, open it back up. And we're ready for business again because it's still operational, and it will be until. And I, the, the houses, these houses last, uh, you know, 30, 40 years <clears throat> if you take care of them or more. 
first they said 20 years, but they're, the guys are saying 30, 40 years. Because, you know, I, I look at it this way. We have a house here. We have a house over there. And that's a nice house. You could easily expand on that house over there. If you want to expand on it, and you build and have a nice porch. You have everything. But here, what we're thinking about is going up, building a nice, big, walk-around porch, you know, open room, a bathroom upstairs, really nice bathroom, a nice kitchen upstairs. So instead of having three kitchens, two kitchens, we'll have three. Why? I don't know. That's what we'll want to do. But we figured the cost on that. It's just going to cost us about seven, $8,000 to do that total. But then again, too, we said, no, we saved the money because it's not like there's that much money in the kitty either. We saved the money to go in the States. So I want to talk about that. So land can vary uh, depending on where you go. Uh, and they go, some people want a lot of money for their property. That's just the way it is. But some people really don't care. Like down here, you can go buy a piece of property down here. Uh, probably for a thousand dollars and have a nice little lot, okay? And uh, how could you beat that? So fifty thousand pesos, a lot down. And I'm not talking uh, like miles and miles from here. I'm talking down here about a hundred yards. So there's property down and around to be sold. You just have to look out for it and watch it. Just because they don't have for sale signs, so you have to go to these lots. Who owns this lot? Well, I don't know. Well, then you have to re research because. Not everybody, they don't have title search here. They don't have any of that stuff. You better make sure if it's tribal owned, boy, 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 you better make sure you get your P's and Q's together. In some instances, it's best not to buy and best, best to lease. God bless everybody. God bless everybody. And thank you so much for coming on. Uh, I'll see you guys next time on Tom and Ruth, Philippine Adventures.